In this demonstration, I will add on to my previous discussion regarding uh, viewing angles and how they relate to drawing perspective cubes. In that particular video, um, I mainly concentrated on showing you how you can basically view a cube uh, from looking from the top down at the cube, uh, the bird's eye view, looking at it at eye level, and looking at it from the bottom up, the worm's eye view. Now as you'll notice, that was a fairly vertically uh, oriented type of viewing angle where we're just really going from top to bottom uh, in, a, in a straight line. So in this particular part, I want to talk about how um, you can draw an object not just dead on, dead center between your two vanishing points, uh, but also how to shift that object like in this example of the chair where we take the chair and actually shift it to the left and shift it to the right and how that affects the sketch uh, itself and what you need to consider uh, when you are uh, shifting laterally, an object laterally. We will use the cube as a, uh, as a basic um, base to start from uh, for this discussion. So let's uh, dive right into the demo. So essentially um, you know that uh, you always have to use the horizon line as a as a starting point uh, for your uh, you know your two-point perspective or even one-point perspective cubes uh, by the way we're, we're going to start skewing more towards two-point perspective uh, cubes uh, in our sketch demos uh, from here on out as uh, that is the more commonly used perspective system so let's talk about laterally moving a cube along a horizon line. So, like I said, typically with two-point perspective, uh, a lot of students will actually try to draw the cube uh, really dead center with the edge of the cube basically aligned with exactly the center between the two vanishing points. Uh, that's fine. However, uh, in order to really effectively learn how to uh, use two-point perspective to uh, your advantage, uh, you really have to learn how to actually move this cube off-center as well, as you'll want to be able to view certain faces of your object a little more easily. And I'll explain what I mean by that in uh, a couple of seconds here. So what I've just drawn is essentially your classic uh, cube uh, dead center right between your two vanishing points here okay but what I'd like to show you is how you can then actually move this cube imagine it as a solid object move it to the right and or move it to the left okay so the way you do that is to again just use your closest edge um, we have been using the closest edge as kind of a uh, a yardstick so what we'll do is we'll draw two parallel lines uh, parallel to the horizon line and what this basically does is it allows us to basically shift this edge um, along any point on this rail let's say okay this double rail that we've just drawn so what I'd like to do here then is to build off um, two new cubes uh, but now what they've been uh, the difference is they, they basically represent this cube having been shifted to the right or, or the left. So let's go ahead and draw this one out and construct this one. And let's see what happens regarding the faces um, of this cube. All right, so here's the first example. We've drawn the two long, infinitely long faces, but we need to break them down and um, segment them off so that they look like cubes. So here's our first cube to the right of the originally centrally located cube and then we'll draw our second one over here. Alright so now this one actually let's, uh, let's shift him over a little bit more. I do need a little bit more room for this. Right. I actually have some previous construction lines that uh, align pretty well, so I'm just going to use those. Okay. 
Okay. All right, so one thing you'll notice is when you shift this cube laterally to the right or to the left, you'll notice that these edge lines start to change in terms of their relationship to each other. When you first look at the centrally located cube, you'll notice that its edges are basically equally equally spaced apart. So the distance from here to here uh, is basically the same as the distance from here to here. Okay, so that's very typical of a centrally, centrally located cube. However, if you are shifting it to the right, what you'll notice is that the distance from here to here is greater than the distance from here to this edge here. All right, so this is a function of perspective, of which is a reflection of real life, in that um, you get a certain level of uh, foreshortening uh, going on here. And this is why this face looks a little bit bigger than this face over here. So the word foreshortening um, is something that we will discuss more and more um, as, you, as you start drawing um, more and more objects, all right? But just be aware that foreshortening is what is causing uh, this particular ph phenomenon. Likewise, on the left column, on the left side, uh, rather, uh, you'll notice the opposite happening where the distance from here to here is greater than the distance from here to here. It, it almost it becomes an inverse when you go to the left side. Again, this is a reflection of what happens in real life when you're viewing an object uh, that is not centered uh, along the bridge of your nose. So if you if you think about this center line right here, uh, imagine that you're that's your nose right there. Okay, so you're kind of glancing really off to the left here and off to the right. So if we were looking at this from a um, top-down view, uh, you would basically be looking at your three cubes. And you would be standing as a person, you would be standing right here looking straight ahead. And again, you'll notice that the distance from this edge to that edge is the same as the distance from that edge to that edge. But as you view these other cubes off to the left and the right, you notice that you actually see more of this face right here uh, than you would this face here. So primary face, uh, secondary face right there. Okay, so that's why you actually see more of this and this face on the top view right here. So, uh, so essentially you are moving your cube laterally, uh, potentially left and right. Um, so this is an example of viewing angle as it relates to lateral movement of your cube as opposed to vertical movement of your cube, which is where the um, bird's eye view and worm's eye view and eye level view come, in, come more into play. So hopefully this uh, has, has made a little more sense and this is something you will definitely want to consider uh, incorporating into your drawings. Um, uh, when you are drawing uh, especially rectilinear objects uh, this is a very important thing um, so uh, it is essentially the same idea and you can see that it is um, basically I have actually written here wide less wide and this is actually the centrally located chair and then um, and then least wide and then the backs of the chairs in green uh, and this face right here is sort of inverse where we have wide, less wide, and least wide over in this face here. So again, uh, just trying to apply this to a real life object and, um, and trying to explain this idea of lateral movement. So, uh, so there you go. This is uh, what you will have to you will have to um, uh, think about when moving it moving a cube laterally. All right.